This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Good day, folks. Well, then. Very formal. <laughs> very, formal <laughs> very formal, I know. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking that... Because uh, I do this myself with, with things like that, but obviously I've been doing that opening for... I wouldn't say 200 episodes, yeah. but yes. it's been probably about 150 episodes. I almost wish that, because uh, I don't have the time to do it, but if somebody else wants to do it, I want a supercut of like, you know, it starts off with one box and then two box and then four boxes and then like until there's just a myriad of the voices just doing that opening and see how consistent yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. It'll be pretty consistent, I think, in most cases. Because I know me, I, just with the, the YouTube channels that I watch that do that kind of uh, catchphrases. Or, I mean, not that ours is a catchphrase, just the opening, but um, yeah. that you start doing it along with them. So, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Even with like the same tone and intonation and timing because it's so consistent. It's right. almost like they dropped it in, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> It's actually live. Yeah, ours, so, ours is always live. Go figure. Yeah, and sometimes live. we mess up and uh, have to start over again. But since it's at the beginning of the show, it doesn't really matter. You'll say, no, that's, why we, yeah. that's why we put it here, just in case we do. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I really wanted to go through all the footage, I'm sure that I'd find all the uh, the uh, errors. <laughs> the times that we were like, let's do a take two on that one. The only, the only time I know that it's, uh, it's different is when we have a guest on. Because we feel, it's almost like we feel like there's a pressure to get just get into it you know and it's, it's normally shorter or quicker or there's a different tone to it i've noticed so if you go to the interview episodes you'll notice a difference each time yeah i hear it in post every time when i do the the podcast side of things so yeah kind of like how last time we had a guest <laughs> well, we did the esteemed guest mel mel kirk and uh yeah, it, it was good to have him on again yeah, Mel's always a good time to have on, um, just because he's for <laughs> considering he's the COO of the company. He's a pretty straight shooter. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't couch. Stop around. There's not not a lot of corporate babble with him. No, he just gets on with it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it's it's nice to hear a refreshing tone, and it, there's that sense of confidence of what the information that you're getting. And then, of course, if he can't say anything, then he can't say anything. But. Well, yeah, and he tells you. He goes, nah, I can't really say that. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought, uh, since that was what our last episode was, that maybe we should interpret a little bit of, of what was said in that. Because um, there's one thing for us to speculate amongst us. It's another thing to speculate with the guest sitting there <laughs> who, yeah. can't, who can't nod or give a hint. Um, yeah. It, it gets down to the point where it's always like a poker tell, really, isn't it? Like, <laughs> you say something to him, you just watch the eyes. Or right. Or twinge in the eye to go, oh, there we are. <laughs> Got you there. So the, as they sit there going, why am I still here while you're doing this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's kind of dive right in. We're going to, yeah, we're going to dispense with the banter. We'll save it for later, maybe. Um, we're going to tease apart the interview. Yeah, as, as we do with blockade speculation. TM. The thing that I most wanted to kind of dive into was our little discussion about the Mandalorian, which is big news. New the original tables, right? How good is that? Like we've been, a lot of people have been wondering what Zen's vision is with that, and here we are. We got confirmation that we got brand new ones coming, which is awesome. Right, and so obviously Mel was only able to confirm the Mandalorian. And when yeah. pushed, if that meant that we might finally get, you know, episode nine, or would it be a table pack? Obviously, he said, I'm not even going to attempt to go beyond <laughs> what I've been cleared to say. No. So, Jared, putting mm -hmm. on your speculation hat, do you think Mandalorian is going to be a single table pack, or do you think it's going to be more? It's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? Because Mandalorian is is an individually licensed show, right? It's a Netflix production, correct? No, it's um, a uh, Disney Plus production. Disney Plus. I knew it was one of those. Like, please insert streaming service here. I don't know which ones there. There's too many these days, right? Um, but you're right, Disney Plus. They have all the things. So, it is within the same house as um, Star Wars. Correct. Um, so, 
would, would be licensed probably around the same you could say you know you probably kick it over the fence and say yes you know it's probably licensed around the same area so yeah you could you could suggest that there could be something else released with the pack like the they, they have Zen do have precedents where they've done single packs before we've got Portal and we've got The Walking Dead um, which are just single table packs only because on the that one hand you... with Mandalorian that bring the Star Wars packs up to 20 tables yes if you add more now you're back into uh oh now we're doing others uh, beyond the 20 but would they necessarily step outside of Mandalorian for licensing purposes? Because it would be fun to just say, hey, this is the Mandalorian pack. And therefore, would it be themed like, much like what they do, where they'll do an, an offshoot or spin-off table? Like Octo Island or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. So would it be just that? And then again, are we talking about one additional table? So it's a two-pack? Or would it be a three pack? I would lean towards a two pack, is what I'm kind of. You reckon a two? Sensing. Why do you think two? Um, it's just a gut See, feeling. It, more I've, than I've anything. Got a problem in that I have not seen the Mandalorian season one yet, um, so I'm running on no information about what content could be in the Mandalorian. At all. Right. It's essentially like me going and playing the Rick and Morty table, which has just landed at Netherworld, by the way. I have no prior art with that game. I won't get any of the in jokes. Yeah, so. and and I I've only seen the first season. I haven't seen the second season, even though it's airing right now. I'm waiting for the whole thing to drop before I view. Um, you like to do it like that, don't you? You don't like uh, to episode it out. Well, <laughs> there's two factors involved in that. The first being that yes, I do prefer to just binge it all out. If it's going to be if it's telling a singular story over ten episodes, then yeah, I just want to binge it out that way. But mm. the other reason is that I don't actually subscribe to Disney Plus. So, mm. w and I do the same thing with Amazon. I don't subscribe to Amazon, but like once a year. And so then I'll just cram everything. That <laughs> so I'll get my I'll get my dollars worth. <laughs> so you would literally go, I will subscribe for the month and I'll just like binge watch 10 hours of TV a day so I can get up caught up to speed with all the different episodes that I've missed. Yeah, pretty much. That's how it works. It's a good way of doing it, you know. Like it's essentially <laughs> like paying for the series. Um, well, it's not even that good because like a, a month's worth of Disney Plus is like what ten bucks. Or uh, just Disney Plus is I think four ninety nine. In, um, in the US. In the it's US, about, I think it's about eight dollars here. I think so. Because I did the same uh, thing with uh, with HBO for the final season of Game of Thrones because I always purchased them on Blu Ray. Uh, mm -hmm. that was when I would finally watch them. But I knew that there was no way I was going to be able to avoid spoilers from the time season eight ended to the time it came out on, on disc. So I waited until the final two weeks of it and timed it so that I, because there was a seven-day trial, <laughs> and I, so I timed it so that I hit the one episode and then ended the trial on the last day of the episode, and, and I, I was able to to stream all the prior episodes up to that point, so I was good on that. But so that what I'm trying, yeah, yeah, what I'm trying to get away on. Hey, tangents, um, <laughs> winning blockade style. That's right. Is that because I haven't seen second season, and the fact that there's going to be a couple of months before uh, Zen even puts out this pack from the time that season two ends of Mandalorian. It's very possible that there's other characters that have popped up that they decide to do an offshoot table of related to that. But based off of the first season, it doesn't feel like there's enough characters that would... Uh, Want an extra, uh, like an offshoot table. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's kind of my, that's kind of my guess. And the, the fact that he was cagey about... I mean, he, Mel didn't even want to say whether it would be included as part of FX3, which it's going to be part of FX3. <laughs> mm. I, I would think so. Um, uh, I mean, look, they have in the past, we know this, they have gone and licensed separate apps to get extra exposure in the app store. Yeah. Um, they've done that with Star Wars. I mean, that's why we see these offshoot packs now. 
because it gives them the flexibility also to try out new new things in those packs as well. Well, and certainly for the mobile market, I see it. Mm. Yeah, I think if it, if it comes out of mobile, it will be probably standalone. Absolutely. Because Zen Zen like uh, Zen Pinball on Android, like it's it's hasn't received any new games um, for ages now. Like it's they now concentrate on those packs, the branded packs, because that's what the uh, the licensors want now. They want that extra bit of um, exposure on the App Store with their product trademarks and graphics all over it. That's how they want it now. Well, I'm trying to think because other than the Williams tables, the last packs that were delivered were the Jurassic Park tables. And I don't. You're right. I don't know if they didn't get they didn't get their own release on mobile. No, Jurassic didn't. Park didn't. I don't know if it's actually part of the Zen store. I should look here. Kill time, Jared. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Th it's weird because they they sort of stopped doing it because I don't think they did it. Uh, they did do it for Doom. I'm pretty sure, right? Yes, Doom. Doom. The the, it's the Bethesda, it's the Bethesda pack. So it's Skyrim Bethesda. and Fallout and Doom, and That's Aliens true. also had its own pack. Standalone pack, yeah, yeah. I think those those two were the start of this whole idea of releasing new packs with subtly different features in it. And well, Star Wars Pinball also had its own app. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. On mobile, we'll and see. Again, for the same reasons because we'll they see. want to try. They want to try those different things in those apps that they just can't do if it's bundled within the same major ecosystem like Zen Pinball on Android. They they need those separated packs to be able to try unusual things. Um, and I have a feeling that wasn't the mobile version of Star Wars the one where they introduced the light and dark side of the Force? Or was that only on Switch? No, there was. Uh, so the mobile v app had an early incarnation of that mm. and then it got refined for the switch yeah, even see, more that's a classic case of experimentation yeah in in, in the wild yeah so that's, so that's, yeah looking looking at the uh the zen pinball app on my phone uh if you go under the universal tables jurassic park not there jurassic park has its own tab ah uh, yes that's right so, so i mean the app has been updated to to get that yeah, that's good. But that's been a while. It has been a while. Yeah, for sure. So it's very possible that rather than Mandalorian going to the Star Wars tab, that Mandalorian will just have its own tab then. Probably will. If they're going to be offering it on mobile. Until they do something about mobile. Yeah, they really need to They need to update the Zen. They do. <laughs> I mean, if, I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, back when FX3 first came out, and we had an interview with Mel. Uh, so that was what, 20... Was that 2017 or 2018? Um, can't remember. But anyway, he had said that, ah, yeah, we're going to be updating the mobile app to FX3 quality and so that everything is communicating and talking with each other. Synergy, yeah. as you'd say. And it Synergy. never happened. <laughs> Just never came to be unfortunately never never did no, and then williams no, no. came along and really just like put the halt on any development whatsoever on the uh on the zen pinball app for mobile stores so yeah, yeah. it sort of stagnated but Thing. there's probably you know there will always be a reason for these sort of things you know who knows there might be a big new mobile app in the works who knows but we just don't know about it yet I still prefer it to be all under one uh, one umbrella but I That's think okay. most people do. They don't like to switch between apps. It's easy enough on a phone. It's yeah, more it's of, okay on the phone. It's more of a pain in the butt when you're uh, on, my PC. on a console or a PC. Yeah, it just takes that yeah. extra extra step of time. Uh, okay, so there was there was that little bit of of just with the Mandalorian. But Mel also was saying that they are wholeheartedly still going to be doing Zen Originals and. There is no bones about it. Why? Because they're profitable for them. Very profitable. Way more profitable than, than the Belly Williams tables, particularly those alphanumerics. <laughs> yeah, when you when you spend that time of uh, that much R and D making them come forth, yeah, that's a lot of uh, development time that you spent. Um, but the 
Zen Originals, even if they're licensed Zen Originals, you're still one license removed, which is you're not having to pay for the Williams for license. Games. That's right. Yeah. Um, and you have much more control over that and license let's agreement. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. It's a lot more popular property. Like, everyone, everyone knows The Mandalorian. Even if you're living under a rock, you've at least heard of the name. So, you know, uh, a lot of the Belly Williams tables, like people know Pinball and Belly Williams, but th there's not the brand recognition anymore because it's not part of the zeitgeist. Well, I think that's why uh, in the case of the Arcade 1-Up cabs, that the Attack from Mars cab is going to be website only and not mm. in stores because... There's going to be a lot of people that have no clue what Attack from Mars is, but everybody knows what Star Wars is, and everybody knows what Marvel mm -hmm. is. I think you did on the money there. Uh, that's yeah, that'll be why it's uh, side only. Which is it's it, it's a bit of a a sting to me <laughs> because yeah, to walk up into the store and get a really cheap one when they go. <laughs> well, there's that, but no, but also just no. I mean, as pinball fans that we are, you know. Those are those are religious artifacts. <laughs> yeah, they are. Exactly right. And, and and the idea that people just would go, nah, no, ooh, Star Wars, you know, it just it's kind of kind of hurts. <laughs> mm, but you know, it is what it is, right? Like yeah. It's, we know why. We we don't like it, but we know why. <laughs> but so what that was the interesting though little tidbit that he threw in there when because the same I mean if if Attack from Mars isn't name brand recognition, you know, paranormal and tables. and <laughs> you know the, the these wholehearted Tesla Tesla yeah that that's not going to garner attention at all. So it was interesting no. for him to say that those might wind up making it into cabinet form, but as padding for some Silly of these other for other titles yeah. exactly. Because like if you did just have a if you did just have a Jurassic Park machine and you weren't able to throw the other Universal tables onto it, great. So you've got three tables now. You need seven more. What would you put into something like a Universal pack? Like what out of those Zen originals would make sense to put in alongside Jurassic Park? Like it'd be it'd have to be some sort of science fiction theme, right? Because essentially it's not well, kind of that's what Jurassic Park is, sort of science fiction. Um, but it's a bit of a long bow to draw, really, isn't it? Like, I don't like think you. Pointed, I don't think you try to theme it at all. I think you literally just go Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park plus seven more tables. Yeah, it's, it's Jurassic <laughs> Park plus some killer filler. Here you go. <laughs> you, I mean, seriously, you, you, think about think about the the toy shock machine and the at games machine. Are they clamoring to say that it's Gottlieb tables and it's these? No, it's Black Hole and Haunted House because those are the only two things that anybody recognizes. Yeah, or anyone who wants to recognize from Gottlieb. Let's be serious. Right. Yeah, you because know, if you put Bone Busters out there, people would be like, well, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's... If you put Class of 8 and 12 in there, they'll go, no. Nope. <laughs> if you know anything about Gottlieb tables. So yeah. So yeah, that was it was it was just interesting knowing that they're that even the Zen originals aren't off the table for being put into one of these cabs. Um but yeah, they'll be they'll probably just be used as filler. Uh but he didn't drop any hints as to what the <laughs> what that table pack that they've been working on forever contains. Yeah, it's going to be surprising to see what it looks like next year. Um, I, I don't really have any preconceived ideas of what it will be. Again, because I don't really have a lot of knowledge of the the franchise. So it's going to be new and shiny to me. Uh, no, I'm talking about the, the, the real Zen Originals. Oh, sorry, the Zen Originals. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, I, I still say that it's going to be Operentia and Dreadnautical and they probably Castle Storm. Well, it might be Castle Storm insane. too, but I don't know. You know, we need Disco Dodgeball Pinball. Come on, like it's just like the most obvious thing to make a pinball. Out of. <laughs> Why don't they do it? You know, well, I've, I've said that or Infinity Golf. 
Oh, like yeah, infinity golf is another classic pinball trope that you could do. Like golfing pinballs are great, except for teed off. Yeah, except. For... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, except you know, for teed off. Like, the, like, there's so much intellectual property that could be turned into like that. But the thing is, though, those are not. I mean, sure, they're brands because they're Zen brands. But do they have the, I guess, the brand recognition? that would be needed right yeah like, sure that'd be great for the the fx3 ecosystem it'd be welcome with open arms but i just wonder you know if it, it might work like if you were looking at those ones to put alongside another cabinet of zen originals if they start building up those newer ones and then put all those into like a makeup pack that would make more sense but i don't really think at this stage Things like Tesla and um, Paranormal and stuff like that would really stand up to critique against some of these newer tables like uh, Jurassic Park. Well, I will say that we're not going to see Paranormal until we see a bonsai run. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. That, <laughs> so that's with a totally full, different. with a full, <clears throat> real back glass or, or another monitor for the back glass. Yeah, I think until you get to there, but yeah, there's no point in putting paranormal and since they haven't done bonsai run there's no point in going there either no there really isn't and you know that would be you know that's a, a, a nice play into the gen 2 of these cabinets right like they're going to get to the point where it becomes an at game style product with two screens in it like two so actual full screens in it let's actually talk a little bit about the uh, the cabinets um a lot mm. of information has come out since we last i mean go to the podcast right before episode 207 uh so before it was mel pin, it was like pinball cabinet news forever like, right was, right and since then we've gotten even more news that is uh you know confirmation of stuff confirmation of titles things of that nature so obviously mel wasn't able to theorize what arcade one up has up their sleeve um but you got to believe that the competition is going to drive certain innovations so here's what i want to let's let's play a little again we're gonna we're gonna do some speculation this episode folks um mm. for those of you that are new subscribers hi thanks for joining us um we've gotten quite a few of you well, hey there <laughs> um this is what our show we are not a uh a uh we're not a paid promotion show not a paper. We're not a promotion show, just generally in general. We're a speculation show. We're an opinion show. We have um, our own opinions, our own very strong opinions about <laughs> things, and we're going to tell you all about those opinions. <laughs> yes. So uh, yes. take everything with a, with a grain of salt because it's highly biased. Um, hmm. So here's what I want to here's what I want to throw out. Toy shock in general. In so he... <laughs> <laughs> it's what they are. Is the do you think that they are going to step up their game and actually come out with their second version model? The second version model was that was going to have a DMD on the screen rather than having the uh, just the score displays that the current uh, general was going to have, and would have the remaining Gottlieb tables that weren't. Well, I mean, they were saying they were going to have all twenty-two Gottlieb tables, but. If they weren't, it's basically that the tables that aren't on their Gen 1 are all the tables that are DMD tables. That's right. So that was going to be their plan was to come out with a Wave 2 that was going to have a DMD screen on it and do that. Do you think that that is ever going to see the light of day? No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay, so why no and, and why is that? Oh, because they've been trumped. Like, there's better, there's better platforms out there now. Part, far side of snuggled up into bed with at games, and you know they're very, very comfortable in that little bed that they've now made themselves away from uh, Toy Shock. Okay. Um. So I don't think, I don't think they're going to be doing that. They far side of just shifted camps, pretty much. Like, so uh, that. So at <laughs> games obviously has that second monitor. Yeah. Um which would allow them to basically they're not dependent upon is this score to display? Is it a, a DMD? That second yeah. monitor can, can become whatever the heck uh, Farsight programs it to be. Mm -hmm. That second monitor, do you see that becoming something that Arcade 1UP will then adopt 
sooner rather than later, or will it be a wait and see for the arcade one-up cabs? Uh, it will be a Gen Two release for sure. The wow! When they release a, um, a set of cabinets, it's going to absolutely have a second screen in the back box, full size, as part of the bill of materials. And what do you think? Do you think that's going to be? So do you think that's going to be though uh, same price point, or will they obviously oh, no, then have to raise the price? It will be more expensive. So maybe by the fifty dollars, so that it's the same price as at games, because right now those cabs are four fifty, uh, yeah. or excuse me, five fifty. At games is at six hundred. Yep, I think they will. They will feature match and price accordingly. So when you uh, say feature match, you're also saying that you think Gen Two will have Wi Fi. One hundred percent. That's like they already like you can derive from what Mel and and John Dynamite on are saying that. They're doing it very carefully the first time around, but you can almost guarantee that they're at the moment negotiating with their license holders to say, hey, is it okay if we actually do Wi-Fi leaderboards online store in this product? Because it's what the market demands. And, you know, they're already testing the waters. They're like, you know, at Games are already doing the investigative work with their leaderboard solution for um, NBA Jam. So they already have test case out there in data to help them make that that data driven decision about whether it's viable or not. And yes, we we know that John has confirmed in the past that it's, it's you can chuck Wi-Fi in there, but you know you've got to have the ecosystem surrounding it to make it work, and that's the expensive bit. But that's the direction they need to go because all the other all the other markets like at games say what you want about them, but they do actually have a very good. Um, ecosystem mm -hmm. that you can plug into right that's that's their strength actually that's yeah. their product strength yeah that, that, that's, that's their market differentiation so if at game not if um, um, arcade one up want to step into that same level as at games and they may not for strategic reasons if they do though they need to actually start adding capabilities into their products now I wonder uh, I've been wondering for a while if the boards that are being shipped in the Gen 1s don't already have the module in it already and it will be activated by a Wi-Fi update or like a USB update. I'm just really curious because <clears throat> if they know that that's the direction they want to go in and they, they would have been planning out Gen 1 and Gen 2, you can guarantee it, right? Like if I was doing it and if I knew that when Gen 2 came around, I'd have all these customers wanting to like get upgraded boards for their games. I would be future-proofing that board now with the understanding that I'm going to be adding Wi-Fi almost certainly in Generation 2. And that Wi-Fi module would be just off or just not catered for in the software. And when the software then supports it, it just magically starts working, you know? I don't so, think I'm as optimistic as you. <laughs> you don't think no, I don't I don't and the reason why I say that is based off of what they've done with their arcade cabinets um, they have to date they have NBA Jam and they are doing I think Marvel vs. Capcom I think is getting the Wi-Fi put in um, I don't remember if I don't think Golden Axe has it or not, but they were, t and they, but they, they for sure are talking about Golden Tea. They're not talking about retroactively being allowed to upgrade your old cab to in incorporate that. I mean, you'd have to literally buy the whole brand new board, and that's not going to be a cheap little piece that you know, an add on. Um, and there's going to be probably enough improvements to something like Golden Tea for the cab itself. Uh, considering I, I think that was a wave one cabinet for them that uh, those owners v might very well want to just plain upgrade completely um, with a with a whole repurchase the so I think that they very much play to what it needs like what increments can they do that the customer base is cool with uh, they're still going to have to figure out, yeah, are you going to be able to add games or not? And 
I think in the case of like the Star Wars cabinet, it's you're only going to be able to add Star Wars games. With the Marvel cab, you'd only be able to add Marvel. With Attack from yeah. Mars, you'd only be able to add Williams. So, because why is that? This is their model. This is their business model. They want to sell more and more and more. Look at how many Pac-Man releases they have, and they keep on releasing Pac-Man in various incarnations. And you would think that the public would be sick of Pac-Man, and yet people still are buying these cabs. Mm. So because it's slightly different art, slightly different product offering, like different games on each one. They different games. The monitor is better. The, you know, the buttons are a little bit better, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, you know, certainly, you know, if we look into my claims that, yes, the next one will absolutely have a second screen, then that would not fit in with that module board already having Wi-Fi on it because that would make it, well, number one, the cabinet that we have now that's being released and sold now doesn't support the second cabinet. And I don't see them, uh, sorry, doesn't support the second monitor. So I wouldn't see them going, oh, look, you know, you can upgrade your existing box and put a new monitor in it. No. They just make a new one because that's just too hard. So um, even though Mel says it's easy enough to swap the boards out, like that's not something that an average consumer would actually care to do, I don't think. I mean, I'm just going to say, do you know how much, (laughs) do you know how much the lit up marquee is? Um, If you want to buy a lit up marquee, it's 80 bucks for just a lit marquee. But just with a LED yes. light on the back of it. Yes. Uh, really? Yes. Wow. So that's, that's a severe that's piece of fun. non-tech. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I think that they're very much going to see what the market will bear and incrementally up do upgrades and put things it will, in. It will be a full, <clears throat> pardon me, a full product upgrade. It won't be a an upgrade like a a hardware upgrade that you can install yourself. It's Correct. A so I think if brand new box, I think if anything, you're going to see Wi-Fi, the next wave. Uh, as for a second monitor, I think that would be not until a third wave. Mm, I I think the, the my opinion is the market's that hot. Yeah. At the moment, that it, it will be in the next wave. That's my prediction. Let's mark this episode. <laughs> say, this is the prediction. So. Um, Knowing that uh, at games is kind of driving in terms of, hey, we've got second monitor. Hey, we've got Wi-Fi, downloadable games. Um, and that we think that that's going to drive what Arcade 1-Up does. What is Arcade 1-Up doing that you think will drive at games? That at games is going to go, ooh, we need to adopt that. Oh, that's an interesting question which I haven't given a lot of thought to. Um, Let's see. Well, I think what I've seen in the At Games forums, I mean, they're looking with all the Farsight games to have everything locally installed. So I think they're realizing very quickly that streaming isn't something that you do with Pinball. Um, So they're looking at um, I think all the new Farsight titles that are being produced for At Games are going to be downloadable ROMs that you can install onto the hardware. You're talking about all the the Taito games or Taito. How do you pronounce it? It's probably Taito. The the Taito titles that uh, Farsight we're assuming is going to be working on. Yeah, I think there's a few other ones too. That like they might be bringing in some other Farsight tables as well that um, will be going on there. I've what like what? Seen, don't know. They're not being super revealing about well but no but what i'm saying is what other farsight tables beyond stern could they bring in uh well what i mean that i think that not all the tables are available yet on the platform so i think they're releasing them incrementally so all the all the ones that farsight have made like all the got lead ones that's uh, well yeah but okay so <laughs> jared may not be aware i made videos of all the tables that are going to be <laughs> <laughs> available on all the various cabinets. Um, and I guess I have not made one. I haven't done one about Godly. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Look for that, folks. I guess I'm going to have to be doing that. The 22 tables, the two that are not going to be included, uh, are the original. We did talk about this. The original version yeah. of uh, El Dorado and uh, Big Hurt. Yeah. Oh, wait. Is it Big Hurt? 
Big yeah, Show? Big Hurt. Big Hurt. Yeah, Big Hurt. Big, big the baseball big, one. High school, yeah. Um, but other than that, there's only 24 Gottlieb tables total with those two included. So take those out, 22. There's the 22 that are going to be included. Beyond that, you have, I think it's 18 or 16 or 18 Stern titles uh, that I don't think they're going to be allowed to have locally installed in cabinet mode. Well, maybe not. Because I don't we'll think, well, and I say that because I don't think Stern wants them to. And when Arcuda, when they were doing the whole Arcuda thing, the Stern tables were specifically not converted. Excluded. Yeah, they were excluded. Hmm. And beyond that, Farside doesn't have any tables. Yeah, true. Well, I think what they've learned, like if we cycle back to the question of what will, what is at games taught? That's what, what is um, RK1 up taught at games? Um, I think, in general, they're going to try and make all the pinball games first-class citizens on the cabinets. Okay. So that you could actually play them locally. Um, I think, potentially as well, uh, th this might be a byproduct, but like what I think is that you know, because Arcade won up, the, the hardware and everything on there is designed to work like one to one with the um the games that are installed on it giving it a better overall experience like you know the the solenoid feedback and the accelerometer tilt and stuff like that one thing that's missing on at games is the fact that if you bring your own pc and plug it in um you lose accelerometer tilt and you lose um uh well they don't even have haptics so um they or do they I thought they said that they had solenoids, but they haven't yeah. said how many. Yeah. All right, let's assume they have solenoids, but I'm pretty sure that the the non-native titles, so the ones that aren't Farsight, you don't get that. Well, no, they would have games. no way of, of communicating that information. No. So that would be something that if they really wanted to make their product very good, they would work out a way of doing that. Don't mind that noise. <laughs> Nothing happened. Just the thing I was fidgeting with falling to the ground. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... So your thing with what the games would want from... Would learn from what the market is asking with regards to what Arcade 1UP has put out is that one-to-one -one connection that is truly communicating and, and working 100% as dedicated with those tables that are built into it. Um, yeah. Really offering a first-class experience. But you don't think there's going to be anything that they want from cabinet design or... I guess that's really what, what it comes down to. Camera, ca cabinet design and uh, hardware design. Well, it's, this is a problem. Like, I think for for everything that, I, that, that At Games is, they're probably the cabinet, honestly, that is going the right way in the market. Like they're offering things that like at a pretty good price point let's be serious that most cabinet builders expect so they expect that back glass they expect the dmd that's separated which you know both products have but that that back glass is the thing that people are really getting the most excited about with the at games product okay so i actually think from a from a hardware product offering i think actually rk one up have some catching up to do with at games i'm not suggesting that the at games game ecosystem is in any way superior to the rk one up at games ecosystem uh well, the rk one up games that are being offered but they do have the advantage that they must have done some market research different to arcade one up or had to make some decisions based on price point etc about what they wanted to produce because like really the cabinet design aside there might be some tweaks they can actually make to the cabinet design which i think flattening it out like arcade one up has done and recessing the screen does seem to make it look better i'd need to see it in person but it feels a little bit more pinball like doing it like that so yeah there could be some cues they could take from arcade one up about cabinet design but really the overall layout of what they've got is more down the line of what a 
more pinball enthusiast would expect in a cabinet. Um, and the thing that is intriguing is that with the Attack from Mars wave, uh, the thing that would be really nice, and they, I mean, this comes down to why they wouldn't have included um, Safecracker um, in the, the list of tables, even if they have or haven't already, because you need that back glass, right? Oh, so, yeah, you're not kidding. You yeah, absolutely so, do need that back glass. So that's that's really, before they go down any of those tables, they, they need to look at that back glass. Even, even Cyclone. Oh, not Cyclone. Uh, no, Cyclone. Well, Cyclone has the, the little spinning. It doesn't really matter much, but it does have the spinning it disc. But it's still a thing. Uh, Junkyard has uh, mm -hmm. a couple of lights that, that go up, but that Junkyard is coming out as part of the pack. So that's going to be interesting. How are they going to handle that? Yeah. So, yeah. Little uh, little yeah. reality is going to have to be uh, <laughs> altered in terms of what you're... Hey, why is the back glass now suddenly where my table is? <laughs> So is let me just ask: Is the Attack from Mars table up for pre-order yet? Honestly, I don't know. I've only heard that the Star Wars and Marvel table have uh, been put up for pre-order. Hmm. Interesting, hey. I wonder why that might be. I don't do why. <laughs> Jared's got that uh, Catherine the Canary look. Why, Jared? Why? What do you not? I don't know what you're speculating on here. Based on our discussions that we just had then. Um, there's something fundamentally missing from that particular range. There's a technical limitation that they, they need to solve, potentially, unless they manage somehow to zoom in on an element of a back glass into the DMD and show those elements that are on the screen that you need to actually select from, like in Junkyard, for example. Um, or they just, you know, do the thing and just use that, break the illusion and use the main screen to flick up to the back glass, which is just going to look really rubbish. Let's be serious. Like that's not going to be good in a cabinet. Um, they've got potentially something they're working through right now to potentially test the market on what a two screen device would look like. Hmm. That's my call. All right. Jared, Jared's uh, he's got some bold predictions this episode. He's going out on a limb. <laughs> um, well, if we're going to speculate, let's not stuff around. Hey? <laughs> let's let's get into this and let's really throw some wild ideas out there. Okay. People thinking about what could be. So we've we've covered now the the fact that uh, neither at games nor uh, arcade one up want anything from Toy Shock and their cabinet that. Uh, Toy Shock is probably going to walk away from this whole uh, <laughs> this whole venture because it's just not worth jumping into the fray. That leaves Well Played Arcade. Well Played Arcade, who has the Zacharia tables, does not have a display of any type. But right. they do have Wi-Fi, and they do say that they're going to have a store that'll allow you to purchase and add tables to your collection. Yeah. So, is there anything other than that store that the either two biggies would want from Well Played? No. No. <laughs> it's not really a great cabinet. Do you think that Well Played is going to have a second wave that will have a monitor, or do you think that they're going to go the way of the Toy Shock? I'm um, not sure. I mean, let's let's look at the facts. Like Zacharia or well, uh, Magic Pixel does have a cabinet mode in their game. Yes, um, it is only on Steam, and you can guarantee that they're using an Android build. In fact, probably looking like looking from it. No, they Steam they confirmed it is an Android build. The Android build. So yes. you can pretty much guarantee they wouldn't be doing a lot of software modification to that build because it would be too costly, um, given the size of the studio. Um, so. I don't think that they will have a second wave. I think that they will do exactly what Magic Pixel has been renowned and have done very well um, up to this point. They will exploit the form factor of the cabinet to its maximum degree, and they will do everything they can on that cabinet to jam in all the games that they have 
inside the Android build, and that will be what you get. I think they'll they have one shot on this. I think they've already made their decision about what they want. It's a very affordable cabinet. Um, it's probably like the, on the cheaper side of things, so it will cater for a different market. And if I was to have a toy shop cabinet or one of these, it'd be a tough choice. But if we're looking at the range of games that it will eventually become available on this cabinet, it probably would actually be the well played because you just have more longevity in it. it like it'll give you more bang for buck. Yeah. I, uh, my only <clears throat> thought would be to address the display issue. Uh, yeah. They also have the, the small form factor uh cabinet yeah. they have the tabletop an thing. and i think that they're going to via wi-fi link it to your phone and have you just put your phone on top there's your display uh that for your for your really dmd smart move. and i do that and i think that they would do the same thing with having an add-on module that you can an add-on screen that you can purchase separately and just slap on top of you know on top of the back box and there's going to be your display so I agree. I don't think there's going to be a wave two. I think this is their this is their cabinet. This is their machine. And you're right. It's just going to be a matter of hey, but at least you can download even more tables. Um, that being said, so I made a critical mistake in terms of what tables were going to be on this. I thought that it was going to be the solid state, the 27 solid state tables that actually exist in real life, being put onto this well played arcade cabinet from Zachariah. Because I misinterpreted when people say recreations of real world tables. That's not the same thing. <laughs> they were remakes, but they didn't use the word remake. And remake is what they call what is actually going to be included, which is all DMD versions of it's basically Magic Pixel's own creations. Yeah. Um, Which is very strange. I, I guess there's no, like the well played cabinet doesn't have any mention of Zachariah on it, does it? Not that, that I've that's, seen. That's the interesting thing that we need to think about when we're looking at this cabinet because it's not, it's not celebrating the the Zachariah name. It may even be that there isn't even mention of Zachariah in the in the build that they're using. It may just be well played pinball. And here's twenty. Here's tables. Yeah, but if you're offering the ability to download more, it's going to be those Zacharia tables, and the names are all Zacharia, and the artwork is all Zacharia. So I mean, there's Maybe. even there's even Z's on top of the uh, pop bumpers. <laughs> yep, but you know so. they've the only ones that really heavily feature, like that. That would just be uh, easy enough to. It, the only ones that are original Zachariah are the original Solid States and some of the EMs. And the EMs, that, yeah. That are there. So it, putting those ones aside, if you exclude those all together and just look at the ones that, that um, Magic Pixel have gone and customized and made their My Own Creation tables out of, removing any mention of Zachariah from those tables isn't a tall order. And it would mean essentially that they didn't probably have to pay any licensing for them because they're they're completely different names and everything oh no they've no they remake they're like Fafala remake when right. they've got them so they still mention the name so yes. yeah there's that so you're there's you're me. you're thinking that this choice was made on a licensing decision potentially because i'm thinking their choice was made off of and again this comes from me making the the video is showing off all the tables uh the remakes are all DMD. Uh, mm. They all have modes. The uh, the slingshot gap is typically of the wider variety rather than all of them being the super narrow kind of oddball variety. The layouts yeah. are more traditional. You've got ramps and, and habit trail, you know, wire forms. Yeah. Um, so they're more yeah. modern. Mm. And f considering that not many people stateside have ever seen a real Zacharia table. <laughs> um, no, they're pretty rare to see out in the wild. Like, it, I've already seen a couple here in Australia on location. Right. So, so I mean, it, it almost makes sense to just go, hey, yeah, these are these are our creations, and uh, 
or more in tune with the aesthetics of the time, mm. I do think it's kind of a mistake um, because I liked the variety of what those 27 solid states offered. Uh, everything from an EM that's basically been converted into a solid state all the way up to uh, some interesting design choices with play fields and, and how things function. You know, I think if anything, the the Zachariah pinball offering is probably, it, it may not have the strength of table design that some of the other offerings have, but what it does show you is evolution. It mm. really does show how, and this is in some part what Magic Pixel's own um, thoughts of evolution mean. But at the same time, when you're going from from the the solid states, which are essentially the bedrock, like all the all the game designs in Magic Pixel have been based off the solid states. The the retro tables or the EMs are riffing off the designs in um, or the branding at least the the art package of those um, solid state tables and going back in time. But then you go forward in time with the DMDs. And then you go even more forward in time with the deluxes, which are like essentially <laughs> video screens. So essentially they're using, they're really, it's a really creative thing about that package, right? Like they are really, we said this before, by far they are getting the most value out of their license for sure. Um, but it, it shows you the, I guess the, the, the the pinball design chops that this studio has it's that's a lot of skill to be able to go we know what ems look like and the thing is some of those em tables are crazy in design and that's exactly what some of the early ems were they were just unplayable <laughs> because they were just so oddball when they were trying to work out geometry and stuff in games of what worked and what didn't like they were essentially experimenting in the wild with all these players um, in the early days of EM, like in wood rail days. And some of the some of the um, EM designs in uh, Zachariah Pinball are very much inspired on wood rail designs. They're oddball, to say the least. Um, but so I'm just going to I'm just gonna clarify here, too, for those that don't know. In Magic Pixel Zachariah Pinball, there are, there's an EM tab. Those are the tables that actually do physically exist in the real world. And then there's the retro tab. The retro tab is Magic Pixel's interpretation of, of what tables would that's look right. like as an EM. Yeah, that's true. Um, which makes it which makes it hard to commentate on because there's a blurred line right. for me sometimes. Like the, the retros are really, let's see how completely ridiculous we can make a table and still have a ball travel around on it. Um, <laughs> because those ones are, there's some really strange ones. Like there, there are some tables with just literally the whole bottom half of the play field is filled with gobble holes that will eat your ball and return it to the outlane instantly. And the whole top of the play field is just loaded with pop bumpers. Yeah. And it's just, it is like wood rail craziness, really, um, in, this, in its design. But it takes it to an, the next level. They really are some weird designs. But still interesting to check out. Whether I want to buy them as a DLC, I don't know. Mm, maybe not. Because they're just a little bit too out out there. They're not really super enjoyable to play, I'll say that. Well, this what? brings up a, something I've been kind of... People have asked, hey, can you comment about the Zachariah uh, Deluxe tables? And other than playing the free trial version of it, I haven't purchased any of them. No, I mean, and I've been asking myself, why haven't I? Because I... Each one is vanilla. What's that? I feel that each one, particularly the animations on the DMD, there's just, it's cookie cutter. Well, and that's what I was going to say. It it follows suit with uh, actually what they did with the remakes. Mm. And that is, for the remakes, it was just, well, instead of having a score display, we're going to put that score in a DMD. But we're not going to put any character animation or any kind of animation uh, with scenery or there's not going to be a video mode, nothing. There's going to be nothing on the DMD other than a score and you know maybe firework graphics and yeah. text telling you what to shoot for. 
that's about the yeah. that's about the extent of what's going to happen. And so the deluxe tables, it takes that exact same methodology with, hey, we've got a video screen just like you would see on the latest Stern tables, but they don't do anything with it. It's just literally a score display. And as I was playing through all of the remake tables, of which, hey, at least there's this, Jared. Our voices are going to be on a cabinet now. On a cabinet, that's right. Um, Look at that. We're but, famous on the cabinet. But what uh, I noticed with all of the callouts, we all had essentially the same script. Yeah. Which was... We really did. Calling out spinner, double jackpot, loops. Uh, loops. That was it. We we weren't calling out... Look, you take that and you look at Medieval Madness and it is all character. And, you know, they're not... They're not sitting there calling out loops necessarily or anything. It's there's it's building a story through all the call out voices and, yeah, and that's what's missing, isn't it? Like, it's completely tables, what's missing. The the tables themselves they become interchangeable. They do. And the thing that's frustrating, and I, I get why, right? Hiring voice talent and developing narrative for. A, I was gonna say is the it's not the hiring of voice talents; it's the developing a narrative. A story it's working at the plot of a table. It's it's hard to yeah. do. So, like these these newer tables that Zachary are offering, they they have different shots to take and they have a different feel to them. But they're very very anemic in the the theme and the integration. And I think that's what makes me not click the purchase button that much on them. That's yeah, because it's not it's not that the design. The layout is bad. It's just not memorable. Essentially, it almost feels like mm. you're playing a Whitewood after Whitewood after Whitewood. Yeah. And, and you don't, nothing like sticks alpha, with you. With Alpha 0.2 code on the play field that just allows you to flick and have your score registered. Yeah. And like, and that's that's the frustrating bit. Um, it's It would be good if they could somehow weave some story into these remake tables because they're calling out for it. They really need something to bring you in. And look, if they did that, it might be a different story. But at this stage, they're just, they're very samey to play. And interestingly enough, that's kind of the problem with the real Zacharia tables. I mean, they're all, it's, it, yeah, there's art. But yeah. that's it. There's not call outs. The, there's not. Uh, well, look, it's very much the same. Like the, the original wave of solid state tables that Zachary released, they were in the era of, you know, the system, uh, the very early, like, 80s pinball tables. Like, yeah. they were going from 80 to 87, I think, for the solid states, and they stopped producing them. It was early on where they went, nah, we, we can't do any more of these tables. Like they weren't going to the nineties in the age of DMD and stuff no. like that. It was all alpha. It was just not even alpha numeric. It was just alpha tables. So, like, you know, having played those tables, they don't do speech. They don't really do anything like that. Oh, sorry, they do do speech, but it's like one or two phrases. But think about That's this: it. Centaur, which was nineteen eighty one, has oodles more theming oh, and character and stuff that than anything the Zachariah ever put out. It almost tells a story with only about five or six callouts. Right? Which is, when you think about it, pretty ingenious. And the same as Gorgar. I was just thinking Gorgar. Gorgar is six callouts, yet it actually has a narrative to it. Yeah. So, like, it's possible. And you're, you're dead right, Chris. You can do it. But Zacharia chose not to. They just chose to let the artwork and the playfield layouts tell the story and not tell that story through any sort of um, computerization. So see here, folks, if you're wondering why we pile on like we do, a lot of this is based off of our own experience with what we have played and mm -hmm. what we've put hands on. Um, you know, I've played every Williams table that is being offered uh, digitally, and I've actually put hands on real Zacharia tables, and yep. so have I. You know, I've so played, it's like I played literally every table was in Pinball Arcade, right? Um, so I mean, it's like 
often. And and based off of that, you know, I have believe me, you throw me in a row of Gottlieb's or you throw me in a row of Williams, I'm gonna walk to that Williams row every single time. And yeah. only will go to the Gottlieb table row when the Williams are busy. Right? <laughs> yeah. like you wait for a game. Then as soon as that Williams available, see you later. I'm walking mid ball away from that thing. Yeah, completely. <laughs> completely. Yeah. Um, when it comes to our opinion about which cabinets we would prefer and stuff, well, I have experience with what Arcade One Up has put out in terms of their video cabs. I've never put fingers on anything at games has ever Arcade made. Legends. No. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to get excited about something that I've not so much as I don't even know what the button presses feel like on, yeah, an, on, on an arcade legends cabinet. And I mean, down here, it's so hard for me to even get access to any of these products at all in Australia that I have even less chance of getting my hands on one of these things. So yeah, really, I, I, will, if Chris manages to find his way into having one of these things. I'll be living vicariously through him on that because it's. I, I really don't think Australia is going to see a lot of these, and that really makes me sad. I mean, who knows? And believe me, if I do, uh, I will document the crap out of it. <laughs> oh yeah, but there's yeah. We're gonna to have to get you a couple of extra webcams, Chris. So you can <laughs> screams. <laughs> I I don't think that I would actually do you know a live unboxing, but the, there will. There would be That's an unboxing. <laughs> like, look, I know people do like to see things being put together. I just don't really understand the attraction for it. J Jared, I'm discovering that I don't understand at all what people actually want to watch because mm. there's stuff that we've made and put out that have gotten way more video hits than other things, and it boggles my brain. But I yeah. just go, okay, if that's what you guys want, then I guess that's what content we need to put out. <laughs> mm. Let the audience speak. Yep, something that to that effect. Well, let's see. We covered a little bit about what Mel said. We covered uh, the competition aspect of what the market will decide in regards to the four cabinets. And then we kind of laid into Zachary a pinball a bit, didn't we? <laughs> well, we did, because people wanted us to. So <laughs> blame them. Blame them. It's all their fault. That being said, okay, let me ask you this. Which would you rather play, though? Would you rather play some Pinball Arcade Gottlieb tables or would you rather play some Magic Pixel Zachariah tables? Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a very difficult proposition to consider. I, I think I'd rather tool around with the Zachariah ones because the ones that are in the... The, the Gottlieb tables that came out after EMs, they're just, they're not really that great. Uh, I, uh, it's it's so tough. It is. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's a hard really, one. <laughs> it, it'd be splitting. It's splitting hairs really, really tough. Uh, do it, like, what would I play now? Like if I, if I wanted to go and play pinball and I had to choose between those, Gottlieb probably win out over Zacharia. I think their table layouts are subtly more sane, although some of those early eighties ones, yeah, not so not so hot. Like you know, um, oh geez, it's uh, I I think I'd probably go with Zacharia. I think at least I the art appealing. The art is appealing on the Zacharia tables. They put a lot of effort into the art. Oh, and see, I'm the opposite. I don't like Zacharia art at all. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a mess visually. Whereas I think Gottlieb tables, uh, they still understood the art of doing a playfield uh, for the most part. Well, no, that makes sense. I don't like the Gottlieb premier tables at all. No, well, the thing is, that's, what's, that's what you're playing. Uh, except for some of the, um, well... No, but in terms of like Big Shot or Black Hole, um, you know, I would, I, I certainly would hold those above uh, the Zacharia tables. Yes, correct. They definitely are superior in art, um, but you've got to deal with those those early solid states in there as well. Sorry, the uh, the mid solid states on that package. Yeah. So you're essentially what you're doing. Is I guess. 
you're, you're, you're basically breaking down your choices to half the collection on, I, uh, on that table. I guess I should really put it to the test. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a video of me playing the Gottlieb tables that are going to be available from at games. Um, obviously, everybody knows what they are by this point, but I don't think I've actually seen a video of anybody playing through every single one of them. So just like the previous videos that I've put out, I think I'll do that, and we'll see what I feel like <laughs> if my opinion is different um, by the end of that. Because mm. my mind was certainly made up after playing all those Zacharia tables. Yeah. So, okay. You have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be doing the same. Uh, take one for the team, Chris. Uh... So, hey, we, we do appreciate everybody that's uh, come new to this channel that is uh, subscribed. Um, feel free to leave comments. Let us know what kind of, what is the content that you want from us. What is it that uh, you want more of uh, for us to focus on? Um, and maybe we can... I mean, we're going to do what we want to do, but we'll also squeeze in what you guys want to do. Um, yeah. Providing it doesn't cost us anything. <laughs> <laughs> Because you don't have a lot there of is uh, that. <laughs> free free money just to throw around casually on you know buying arcade cabinets, etc. So. Right. Because as much as I would love to review all four cabinets when they come out, it's not going to no. happen. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. No. <laughs> I'm going to count myself lucky if I get one to review. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. and and if I'm getting one and it's coming out of my own pennies, it's going to be an arcade one of one. Just. Uh, putting that out there um i i have after playing all of those the star wars one i'm kind of disappointed with the table choices truth mm. be told i there's only two that i like about three that i'm meh on and the other five i'm like those. i mean yeah, no. me and jared hate masters of the force and that's oh, in there that's that one of the shouldn't ever have been included on that package it is just terrible um sorry Sam. But it's <laughs> not a good table at all. I mean, we did because we did a breakdown of all of our. We ordered or ranked all of the Star Wars tables, and a bunch of the ones that we ranked low are <laughs> included uh, in are in this package. Yeah, maybe they're maybe they're saving the best for last, right? Like maybe this will be a Gen two offering where the good ones are actually in there, so they don't burn off. They basically don't burn off all their top A grade titles like. Uh, Farsight didn't well because I did for the fun of it just play the ones that weren't I didn't make a video of this but I played the ones that weren't going to be included and I had a way better time with those so yeah hey look in, in closing because I think we're done yes we are um, yeah so in closing I have been going through all the FX3 tables and looking for the ones that don't have the achievements unlocked yet um, I'm doing pretty well with the Belly Williams ones I've only got a couple left which is Safe Cracker which I presume the achievement is get to the vault which is basically impossible because you don't get any memory of the vault letters you get um and i think dr dude is you know become super dude which is like hmm, i got there i was two steps away the other day from getting um super dude so that's something it's it's plausible you can get that one but i've been going back through some of the zen originals and uh i went through um back to the future which i never really got into but what I did the other day is I went, okay, so the reason why I'm not getting into this game probably is because the rules aren't as intuitive as the Belly Williams tables are. That's one of the, the things that these Zen originals do often have a problem with. And, yes. And for that reason, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do what every technical writer should do and refer to the fine manual, RTFM, um, in the game and see what this thing's all about and as soon as i did that i got about 600 million on the game and got to the wizard mode in one setting wow so <laughs> so so my tip dear listeners is to rtfm for the zen um tables that you are trying to work out what the actual freak is going on with and you're going to have a much better time if you do like even the Jurassic Park table, for example, like I, I enjoyed playing the Jurassic Park. I found that I've been gravitating towards that table pretty frequently recently because it's it is surprisingly fun. Um, but I which which one far. specifically, the uh, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, or original. Jurassic Mayhem? The, the Jurassic Park original, okay, the one with Mr. DNA in it. Gotcha. Um, yeah, 
And I've, I now understand that game far better. And again, I think I played that one and I got three times Pinball Wizard score in it after reading the instructions. Hmm. So, so definitely read the instructions. Uh, that will help you. So we would have thought, news at 11, read the instructions. There you go. My Hot tip. tip. Hot <laughs> tip, read the instructions. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, we are at the end of the uh, show here. So uh, thanks for watching. We do enjoy doing these. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to continue doing breaking these up into minis because I know that, uh, interestingly enough, I took a survey and... There's almost no cross-pollination of either you watch the entire show or you only watch the minis, but you don't do both. So <laughs> that's good think, to know uh, also. I think friend of the show, Pinstrat Stan, suggested we use timestamps in the main one. We wouldn't have to do minis, but I tend to agree the exposure we get on in each individual episode warrants them being split up and, and, epi and made them episodical off the, the main show. Yeah. Um, so we'll continue to, uh, to do that. Uh you know, recommend us to your friends on uh, Twitter and uh, link us and do all that jazz because we really do want to see this, uh, see our numbers grow a wee bit. There's one other thing we should probably mention as well. Chris is now essentially a, a instructional designer um, for This Week in Pinball. Uh, <laughs> there's a new thing on, on This Week in Pinball. Uh, it's called uh, Pinball University. And uh, Chris's article about, what was it again? About the basics of digital pinball. Yes. Um, his article that he wrote a while back now is now featured as one of the courses that you can complete. So go and get your degree in pinballology on, um, on the pinball university and become a professor of pinball. Well, then since you mentioned it too, I'm going to, I uh, just started last, uh, just did the first posting of it uh, last week. A uh, new thing called Last Week in Digital Pinball that will be publishing on This Week in Pinball. Uh, I'm not sure what the frequency of it will be, but it's basically... news, basically. <laughs> it, 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 literally, it's it's because that's what he wants. He wants to, uh, to aggregate whatever pinball news there is and, and put it out there. So I will do my... That's what that's going to be. Uh, kind of try and do my best to not be too biased. <laughs> if you want the bias you come here if you want just the kind of the straight skinny you know it'll be there in a or little bite sized nugget ma yeah just the fact ma'am go to um, this week in pinball but uh yeah so <laughs> go ahead and visit that and uh hey you know if you've got comments regarding uh what's going on there drop the uh drop me a note on the uh, twitter here and I will incorporate that that way also. Uh, other than that, we will be back probably in two weeks, I imagine, unless uh, something gigantic drops between then and there. I think that's going to be the uh, the the goal. And Which, you know, we're happy with if something someone wants to drop massive news between now and two weeks. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. So basically, that would put us at uh, after Thanksgiving uh, here in the states was oh, yeah, the uh, that Saturday after. So there's got to be something has got to have been Black Friday news, whatever. <laughs> will have dropped by then, I'm sure. Are they even going to... Look, this is a tangent again, but you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, is that even going to be a thing this year? Is Cyber it, Monday, yes. Monday. Black Friday, no. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> it's not going to be... No, because they, they don't want the, they don't want the crowds. No, the, yeah, they, they don't want the crowds. Yeah. So. Cyber Monday would be good. You can expect some pretty steep discounts on all your pinball platforms on Cyber Monday, for sure. Like keep an eye on your app stores if you need to catch up on the titles that you're missing. And not that we, we have not done this in a very, very long time, but, uh, you know, if you wanted to buy somebody that perfect Christmas present that happened to be mentioning Blockade on it, uh, well, Jared is wearing a wonderful T-shirt. Jared, where did you get that T-shirt from? Well, I got this from a link on our blackadepinball.com episodes. Each episode has a link to our Redbubble page um, where you can buy all sorts of Blackade merchandise. You can buy shirts like this in the coral color that I'm wearing or green or whatever you like. You can print it on whatever. There's you tank tops, cups. there's mugs, there's, there's mouse pads. Cases. Yeah. You can just go nuts and, you know, get more than apply a number of different um, uh, designs and stuff and get them printed off and shipped all in one bulk lot, you'll save a pile on shipping. So 
get in there and get your Christmas presents done, I'd suggest probably getting it done pretty soon. Because <laughs> it's going to be pretty... The mail system in the world at the moment is a little bit disrupted. So um, I would suggest going and getting those orders in pretty quick. Yeah, You know, we get a little bit from each uh, shirt sale. Not a lot. It basically uh, helps us cover our uh, web hosting fees. Web hosting. Yep. That's essentially all we need to cover. But this show is pretty lean. <laughs> all we need... It's just a web hosting cost covered for a year, and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that's going to be, like I said, in about two weeks. Topic unknown other than Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.